Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the close of the age. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to ACW Service. A special welcome to any visitors who might be working with us this morning. We just start and now we're just now we're dismissed. <laughs> Anyhow, our opening here. Our opening here is hymn number 450. You call us Lord to be.
together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. They asked him, 
Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 47, page 764 in the book. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord most high is to be feared. He is the great king over all the earth. He subdues the earth. He's a busy people under us and the nations under our feet. He chose us by our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, who knew us. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord, the sound of the ram's arm. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of the earth. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not you. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. Together, we pray together. Blessed are you, God of all the earth. You have called us out of every people and nation to be a royal priesthood and citizens of your holy city. May our words of praise call the world to turn to the joy of fellowship with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. <clears throat> I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that when the eyes of your heart enlighten, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
and that we'll have our gradual name. God, may hold that great jail. in the middle of a prayer 
or in the middle of a psalm or whatever, and I get lost. Because I did then, and you probably noticed, getting lost is not new to me, and I'm sure it's not new to you either. But today, getting lost may come back into it, because that's been in my mind about some of the readings. Not so much getting lost, but being kind of in a state of flux and uncertainty, which kind of feels lost when things change so much. What I thought about most when I uh, looked over the readings for today was what kept coming back to me strong was the words, uh, the opening words of the psalm. And there's a little song, and I'm not going to sing it because I haven't been practicing singing very much, and I need to practice. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. What wonderful words. They're so uplifting, and they, they you just want to, you, you, you do, even in, when you're not having a good day, you hear that and you go, yeah, there is a lot to be thankful for. It's kind of encouraging and uplifting. Even if you can't bring yourself quite to join in, you know there's truth in it. Even in the midst of those lost times and those uncertain times. There's truth in that. Clap your hands and you say, yeah, I know I should, maybe I can't, but I know I should. Making a noise in a time of celebration or in a time of transition is something that we're actually pretty, pretty familiar with. The psalm, by the way, is an enthronement psalm, so it probably would have been sung or recited or shouted as the Ark of the Covenant was taken from the temple, paraded through the community, and then back to the temple, and re enthroned in its place of honor, reminding the people of the coming of God into the midst of them, God's choosing them. And it's not just important, apparently they used to clean the temple while they were out, and I thought, well, that's kind of practical. But it wasn't about that. It was about that reminder, because we can get complacent, we bring something into our lives, don't we? And it sits there, and we go, yeah, that's wonderful, I love it, I'm going to take care of it. And then it sits there, and two months later, you go, wow, look at the dust on that. <laughs> and not just on the thing, but on our lives, we allow things to be. So sometimes you've got to take it, you've got to parade it around, you've got to show it off. And you've got to reinstate it in that place of importance in your heart and in your life. And that's what the psalm is trying to do. So they were shouting for joy. But doing something like that, maybe not physically moving the ark, but when we get ourselves into a time of flux, and you're cleaning out your cupboards, you know there's no time when your house is so messy as when you're in the process of cleaning it out. <laughs> it gets messier as you go, and then there's a turning point. And in that sense, in our lives, we have that as well as we have it also in, the, in our lives in a broader sense, that we can shake up our lives and it can be a time of certain anxiety. So two things happen when I'm cleaning out a closet. I often play loud music <laughs> and I sing something joyful because it spurs me on to get the job done. And the other thing is that I am often, often tempted to either abandon the task or to just, I don't know, do something kind of crazy something out of whack, something that I may regret later, throw out things that I might want, you know? It can be a time of uncertainty and we can make bad decisions in times of uncertainty. So we can shout for joy in a time of celebration, but there's also something else, there's another reason for shouting and making noise when things are in flux. And I thought about it because I remembered um, as a child, around New Year's. And I'm sure many of you can remember the noise and ruckus. And still is me, but it's different, isn't it? But we can remember the noise and the ruckus that was made by the people on New Year's Eve at midnight. And I know in my community, when I got a bit older, there was always a certain amount of anticipation about being allowed to go to the door. We were only ever allowed to go to the door. You weren't allowed to go outside. You were allowed to go to the door with the door open and listen. And you'd hear the guns going off, the pots and pans clanging, and it would be a wonderful ride. There was no fireworks in those days, not in our community anyway. But there was a lot of noise. 
And I never quite understood why, as later on, uh, reading research about that, and, and it suggested that this comes from the idea that during a time of change, like the change over from one year to the other, or when there's significant change in our life, there is a thinning, as it were, of the veil or that which protects us from evil. Whatever evil means to you, maybe it's making bad decisions when you're cleaning out your closet. Whatever evil means, that when we're in a state of flux, a state of transition, there can be a thinning, and it seems as if there's an assault sometimes on us, because things can go wrong. And so to ward off the evil spirits, past generations would make a wonderful raucous noise to protect themselves or others who were going through periods of transition. It made a lot of sense to me then why they would fire those guns at weddings. A wonderful time of transition, isn't it? Scary for everyone, and a lot can go wrong. <laughs> so yeah, making a shout unto the Lord, shouting a cry unto God. And it may be a cry of praise. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Maybe we are shouting in triumph. And that does great, too, to ward off evil spirits, to proclaim the goodness of God when we're in the midst of times of transition and times of flux. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but the world is in a time of flux. You all look like you're in a time of flux and transition. Never, never in my years of training and all of those things did I ever have anyone say to me, oh, you know, you might come a day when along with all the other things that you have to remember about how you move and the things you do at church and how to handle the vessels, we were taught all that stuff. Nobody ever said, oh, you might have to deal with a lot of hand sanitizer and masks and wiping microphones. Nobody ever said that. But here we are, and we know we're in a time of transition. We can only look at our world. And not only are we in a time of a, of a health crisis, but we can look at, and we know in our own province, the financial crisis that has been looming for a long time. And we can look at other parts of the world where there are similar things, and we know that the world is in a time of flux and transition. And so it is a time maybe when we should be shouting out to God, and we should be singing the praises of God, so that we don't forget even in our time of anxiety and stress. The Gospel reading today tells us of another time of great transition in the life of the disciples. In our remembrance of those times, we're coming now to the conclusion of the Easter season. And, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I forget that it's still Easter. Easter is the longest season of the year, I don't forget that, because it is the most important. But it encompasses more than the resurrection, which is incredibly important. I, I don't think I need to say that. Obviously, the resurrection is at the center of everything we do as a faith. But then there's this thing called ascension. And often we hear tagged on, you know, the resurrection and ascension of our Lord. But it sounds like some kind of epilogue. You know what I mean? That little bit at the end of a movie after the climax that sometimes you put on, if you're at a movie, when we used to go to movie theaters, you're putting on your coat during the epilogue because, oh, you, you cut the end of the story, the important part, we made it, we know who done it. <laughs> so now we're going to get our coat on, we clean up our popcorn, and we're going to leave. But there's an epilogue. And quite often, that's very important too. If you stick around for the little bits after the credits, sometimes there's some fun stuff there too. But we can forget sometimes, and it seems as if the ascension is just a little bit of tagged on to the end. The way to, to tie up ends, because, well, after all, the church needed to explain, well, where is he? If he rose from the dead and he was walking around eating fish, where is he now? So we can say, well, oh, he, 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 they took him away. And do you notice there's not a lot of explanation given is exactly how this ascension thing happened. There's not a lot of details. Right? Some 
vague things about clouds and lifting up, and it's pretty well it. And so we can believe that it's just like a tying on the loose ends, but it's an incredibly important time. It was a time of transition and flux. And I'm sure that as the gospel says, the disciples went off in great joy. I'm sure there was great joy, but great joy sometimes happens at times of transitions too. And for those of you who've had children, you know about the incredible fear that comes with the joy. So I'm sure there was anxiety and fear for the disciples in that time of transition. The man who they had followed and listened to, who had been the center of their lives for some years, was gone. Now, he had gone before because the cross, he had gone. But now there was another gone. And I'm sure that there were times when, like us in the midst of flux and anxiety, they were fearful and uncertain and they were prone maybe to make some mistakes. So there's some things, there are some things in the readings from today that I think help us in times of flux as they were told to the disciples to help them in that time of transition and uncertainty. And I'm not going to do these in any particular order because I had them written down, but who knows where that piece of paper went. So, the first thing that I remember is the men, the disciples, standing there, staring at the sky. And two men clothed in white were told, come and said, what are you doing? Standing around here, staring in the heaven. There is a piece of advice for us. In times of transition and flux, and in those days for the disciples, simply to stare off and hope things were going to be different, to anticipate a better time and to set our hearts and minds on that and that alone, and just to stare into the wild blue yonder, anxious for it to be fixed or resolved, is not what Jesus left the church to do, to simply stare into heaven, to focus on either Jesus' return and the final consummation of things, or their own transfer into that realm. We are called, yes, to be spiritual beings, to focus on and to remember the joy of heaven to which we're called, but that is not to be all we do. So what do we do? They are pointed to Jerusalem. In the gospel, Jesus says, stay here in the city. The men at the, in the first reading say, go back to Jerusalem. Why Jerusalem? Why should we go back to Jerusalem? And you and I, oh, I don't know about you, but there's a travel ban on now, so I doubt what we could actually pick up and go to Jerusalem anyway, even if we had the money to do it. So physically, I don't think we're being asked to go to Jerusalem. But what does that mean for us to go to Jerusalem? Well, when Jesus set his heart and his sights on Jerusalem, as he moved throughout his ministry, more and more, we are told in the Gospels, he sets his mind to Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem would be the consummation of all that he had come to do. He had healed people, he had fed people, he had forgiven sins. And the cross was going to be all about healing and feeding and forgiveness of sins. Jesus couldn't get to the resurrection without going to Jerusalem. And you and I cannot do what God is calling us to do without going through our own Jerusalem, our own places of sacrifice and giving, where we heal and we feed and we forgive. So we are not to be so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly good. Neither are we to forget that we are called to a life of sacrifice and service to one another. I keep thinking there was one more might come back to me, but you know what? Maybe that's enough for now. Because you see, that's what we are called to do, to be people of service and sacrifice. And it is so appropriate that we remember that today as we gather to celebrate the Anglican Church women here in this community, but also throughout the broader Anglican community. Theirs is 
a ministry of service. Don't get me wrong. They're not just around baking pies and serving teas and stuff like that. They do the Martha thing, but there's lots of Mary stuff that happens too. They kneel at the feet of Jesus and they read and they listen and they pray. But ultimately, it is our focus on service to one another, service to the greater community, doing what is needed that gets us to the heart of what Jesus called us to be about. And so today we will celebrate that. We will celebrate, we'll be seeing, we'll see gifts and things that they have made that are going to the service of others in our community. But in a bigger sense, and for all of us, whether we are members of ACW or not, I believe that Ascension calls us to remember that Jesus tells us by leaving us here that if we are to serve him, we can't serve his physical body without serving his church, because that's where Jesus is to be found. In one of the readings, and I think it's from Ephesians, it talks about looking with eyes, that we may have eyes of faith, that we may be able to have eyes that see and are awakened to the reality of God in our midst. And that made me think of another verse. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim by the light of his glory and grace. Well, I can find pictures of Jesus and I can stare at him. I can see and in my own mind's eye I can conjure up an image that I can look at. But if I truly want to turn my eyes upon Jesus, then I have to open them and look around me. I have to look at my neighbor. I have to look at my family and my friends. I have to look at the people on TV and in other places that I encounter in a different way who absolutely drive me crazy with some of their, their attitudes and their anger and their hate. But that is where we turn our eyes if we are to fully see the glory and grace of God and to serve Christ as his church here in this place. The ascension wasn't just a cluing up. It had to happen. It had to happen. We could not become a community in which Christ lived in each and every member and each and every corner of our world if physical Christ stayed among us. So it wasn't just an epilogue. It's very central to the story. So you and I are called today in the midst of whatever struggles we may be having personally, in the midst of this wonderful global struggle that we are having, to praise God with shouts, even if we don't feel like it. To sing praises to our God who has done wonderful things and to turn our eyes upon God in our midst, upon Christ in our world. To offer him our service, and our sacrifice by offering it to the people around us who are in greatest need of it. We give thanks for the ACW in the way that they do that. And we pray that we will be inspired to seek our own service and sacrifice as we pay attention to the world around us, to Christ in our midst, to Christ beyond, Christ in our heart. Amen. Please stand for the passage of truth.
by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church,
I wanted to acknowledge what the ladies have brought forward. This is a, a labor of love that has been done over the past while. It's a mixture of prayer shawls, blankets, comfort pillows, and those little tiny hats that you give to newborns, and all of it going to places of need, such as hospitals and That's what goes with these, and then the other things as well that are going to other places of need as well. And these are just some of the many ways that the ACW are reaching out, not just in our church, but to the community as well. And it's a blessing that they move, not just from this place, but beyond. So we're going to bless all of that and the needs that are needed throughout the community and into the world, as well as the offering that we offer today. So just before we say the prayer over our offering, I wanted to bless these items that we can give them with our prayers attached. So let's bow our heads for a moment. Fathers, you have reached out and created so much in this world. You have also stated that all that you have made was good. We give thanks for all that was made here this day, that it's meant to go out into your world and to bring more blessing and good to those who need it most. Those who are in need of it, those who are fragile, those who are in recovery, we ask that the hands that made these and the blessings that go with it reach those people who need it most to provide them with the comfort and healing they so deserve and that the love that has been spread around all of this may be felt by those who are receiving it. Bless these items in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, let's say the prayer over our gifts together. Eternal God, our Savior Jesus Christ has promised to be with us on the day and the night. Accept that all we have for you this day and renew us in this next year of life for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the people. You can sit or kneel. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea, the Most Reverend Peter Lee, Primate and Bishop of Seoul. In our provincial prayer care, we pray for the ecclesiastical province of Ontario, Archbishop Anne Germand, and the provincial council. In our tri-diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of Grand Falls, rector, the Reverend Robin Tre uh, Trevors, and for the parish of Green Highland, deacon in charge, the Reverend Vernon Short. Remembering the ascension of Christ, let us pray with amazement, wonder, and awe and astonishment, joining Christ who intercedes for all the world before God. Let us offer our prayers to God, saying, O God of wonder, hear our prayer. 
O oh God, we stand amazed. For Christ descended from earth in order to be everywhere at once. We are in half, for in leaving Jesus has not left us alone. We thank you, O oh God, for the life of your Son. Turn our eyes continually to see, to gaze with wonder at your marvelous ways. O oh God of wonder, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of the people, young and old, poor and rich, faithful and unsure, to see the signs of Jesus. Show us everywhere the signs of Jesus, who was raised up and giving freedom and working power and justice. O oh God of wonder, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of your church to the poor places in which Christ now dwells. Help us to see the body of Christ wounded and yet bright with the light of the Spirit. O oh God of wonder, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of the leaders of the nations to envision a new world in which peace and unity reign. Turn the highs of all in power to see the oppressed and those in need. God of wonder, hear our prayer. Turn the highs of your church to see the poor places in which Christ now dwells. Help us to see the body of Christ wounded and yet bright with the light of the Spirit. O oh God of wonder, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of the leaders of the nations to envision a new world in which peace and unity reign. Turn the eyes of all in power to see the oppressed and those in need. For how we live by your inner sight, we give thanks and pray that more such people may take roles of leadership. O oh God of wonder, hear our prayer. Turn our eyes to places of healing, to the sick, those in hospital or treatment, those struggling with illness, that we may see the hope and presence of Christ surrounding them. We pray especially for those we name aloud, either, either name aloud or in our hearts. And today we pray for Wayne, David, Archbishop Stewart, Jeff, Brenda, Rita, Mark, Harry, Lynn, Eunice, Hector, Shan, Delman, Roy. Cynthia, Tony, Marie, Olive, Betty, Lillian, and Clara. Lord, in um, O oh God of wonder, hear our prayer. We say together, O oh God, keep us in the spirit of amazement. Keep us living when we cannot see. Keep us hoping while we wait. Keep us looking for your presence. Fix our eyes upon the glorious Son, who ascended to intercede. We welcome you in great glory. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And, um, uh, we take a moment uh, as we uh, turn the highs of our gathering here to beyond this place. We take a moment to remember departed ACW loved ones. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear our prayer. 
May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Your son is? Adrian, 60 years old. He's 60, God bless him. And you said his name was? Adrian. Adrian. Well, very happy birthday all the way over in Cornerbrook. Mr. Yes, I got a little grandson, 90 years old today. 
your grandson is not, what's his name? Uh, Seth. Seth, well, happy birthday, Seth, all nine years old, okay. And I know you're back there. I'm going to do the ones in front of me first. <laughs> no. I, I was going to say, the ACW are wonderful. They have to be patient, too. <laughs> yes, over there. Yes, Amber. It's my brother's birthday tomorrow. Okay. Your brother is 23, that's great. Say? Oh, Reed, yes, we do that. <laughs> Good, but thank you. All right, now, Charlotte, and then I'm turning around. Okay, yes, Charlotte. I had two grandchildren yesterday, Neil and Selena, with birthdays. Neil and Selena both have birthdays. A very happy birthday to them both. Now. Calvin and Calvin, it was your birthday. <laughs> And you don't have some, what, which day? Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday was. Well, very happy birthday to you. So we got one live one here that we're going to sing to. This is great. Dr. Murray be 45 tomorrow. Who? Dr. Murray. Murray. 44. Oh, God love her. I won't say what the, the number she said, but God bless you, Marie. I know the feeling. <laughs> it's right in the middle of your, in that number that we, it's okay. <laughs> but happy birthday, Marie. Yes, John. Her only grandson will be eight on Tuesday. Oh, God bless him. Well, very happy birthday to him. Now, did anybody else get on? I swear to God, it's somebody else. No? Okay. So, we got anybody left? That's a lot. All right, well, good. Let's sing happy birthday.
Ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik wil je altijd maar iets te hebben zeggen, maar ik zei, nou, ik Following COVID rules and regulations have made ACW activities quite difficult this past year in what we can do and, we, and what we cannot do. We have to follow all the guidelines in order to perform things that we could do and we couldn't do and there's a lot of things we wanted to do and we couldn't do, but we managed to pull off a few things and last Saturday we had a spring sale and a big thank you to everybody who helped out in any way, making preserves, baking goods, mystery parcels, crafts, donations, etc. And a, bit, and a big thank you to everybody who came out and supported us. We are now over $2,800. Wow. That, that is really... That is really un unbelievable, and if anybody was in here and witnessed it, the guidelines that we had to follow and everything, but we did obey by the guidelines, and we could not have done it without your support. And I would just like to say thank you very much, and hopefully we will get a few more donations. <laughs> 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 Our closing hymn is hymn number 371, To God Be the Glory. Mm -hmm. 